Okay, tonight I want to talk about a couple of things. Um, you know, as entrepreneurs, as success seekers, as power move makers, it is extremely important for all of us to establish relationships. I want to talk about the importance of relationships real quick. Um, because relationships are truly is, is to, the key to sustaining your business. It is the key to growing your business. Truth be told, having relationships, me seeing my man Curry, who, who, who's on IG Live, <clears throat> and Curry, I'm going to let you into the room in a second, so bear with me. Um, I know you was here last week, didn't get a chance to jump in. These are long-term relationships that have been made over the years. So for anybody who's having a difficult time establishing relationships, for anybody who's having a difficult time um, maintaining relationships, I want you to enter this conversation tonight because I think you're going to be able to help somebody else who is uh, struggling to get their business off the ground or they're struggling to get their business to the next level. So we're going to be taking it both places. Um, like I said, there are people who are on Clubhouse. So I'm going to be going back and forth between Clubhouse and, and IG Live and we see how it goes. So we're going to start off with letting somebody in from um, the IG Live side. My Clubhouse crew, y'all can tell me if you can hear anybody. Derek, I know you are one of the moderators on um, the Clubhouse side, so you can let us know if the sound is okay. But let me let my first guest in on Instagram Live side. side. And again, for everybody, if, if if you're trying to get in on Clubhouse, it is Sean Prez at Power Move Makers. Curry, you're live. Yo, Prez, my man. What's I want to say thank you. How's your family? How's your everybody and your well-being? And I always watch you from afar. I'm a friend of you. And I've worked with you. And I am thank you for what you're doing and succeeding and propelling. Because you worked with some big heavyweights. And what you're doing to carry the culture means a lot. That's why I'm always in tuned into you, man. I appreciate you, Curry. I appreciate you. You mean like... You're the second generation of the Puffs or the Shook Knights or or how, how can I say of uh, the guys from the South, uh, uh, um, Jay Prince and stuff like that because you took a little bit from everybody and started your own form and started the Global Hip Hop Awards. Homie, from a street team guy, from a guy who was just getting paid for doing nothing to doing that, I have to salute you, man. And I was part of your journey, but not all the way of your journey. And to watch you do what you're doing and do it now, to see you sitting in a nice leather seat in the back of your house right now, you're looking real rich, my guy. You're looking real rich right now, man. Nah, I appreciate you, Curry. Nice, everything. I have to give you your flowers, man. Like how Nori does it, a drink champs and everything like that. For what you did with like with guys like with RC Shan and um uh, oh my god I don't want to feel I don't want to leave nobody out of the bad boy crew because there are times where we was battling against each other but we had fun doing it. Now competition is good, Curry. Those were good days, and you know the theme one of one of the themes of tonight is you know it's relationships. And I Homie. think it's important that people understand you and I go back 20 plus years. Thank you very much for saying that because you know what it is? Like, I dibble dabbing out with everything, but I always have respect for you, Mr. Prez. Always have respect for you because you always treated me with, with courtesy and respect and whatever you did your, your side dig and hired us and everything. We made sure we took care of you because you was a real dude. You was a real dude for New York, man. A lot of people don't re give you your props, man. I'm giving you your props, man. 
But you know what I'm saying? And, 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 and I love you for dropping in, Curry. Thank thank you so much. You know, and and it is the sentiments go back the same way. I think that as we we're now the OGs in the game. And it's and it's important for us to give back to this next generation and make sure that they do better than we did. So keep doing what you're doing out there. Keep supporting. And believe me, I always will support you because you know what it is? You always treated me. I'm the Indian, the, I was the, one of the first Indian guys in hip hop. I must say it. You know what I'm saying? Street team guys running around fucking with you guys. And everybody's like, yo, who is this Indian guy? But the relationships that I have I've built with you was you, Super Mario, Shan, RC, June Balloon. Those guys are bad boy. Everybody at bad boy and everything. Even Dr James Cruz. You know what I'm saying? Me and him. He's a Brooklyn Knight. Everybody. You are a special dude. And I thank you to have you in my corner, my man. Thank you very much. If I don't give you my flowers now, I'm giving you your flowers now, my man. Thank you. I'm always in tuned in with you. And I'm going to see you. I hope I can get a pass to the uh, uh, the Global Spin Awards when they come back to New York, man. Nah, you 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 know you're good for life with that kid. Thank you for checking in, um, Curry. You stay safe out there. Thank you very much, and you and your family, everybody, good. And you know we'll we'll link soon. You know how we are. Yes, sir, my man. You be good. Love you, man. Peace. One, minute, one love, love you, bro. Okay, so for just as a test. D Ferg, um, how did the sound, the audio come across on Clubhouse? How did how, how did it sound for anybody on Clubhouse? Let me know how that sound came across. Uh, yeah, it sounded, it sounded good. Actually worked pretty well. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Okay, so Derek, while while I have you here, and, and for everybody um on Instagram Live, y'all can y'all can give me the thumbs up if you can hear Derek loud and clear. But Derek. Can we can we have a, a a quick conversation just in terms of what is the best ways for young up and coming entrepreneurs, um, and not just entrepreneurs, but people working within companies uh, who are trying to establish relationships, trying to create long lasting bonds, you know, getting on the radar, especially as a young exec working in a company, and getting on the the, the radar of people who are already moving, people who have, you know, big titles behind their names. That is not easy to do. And then staying on the radar of these people is even harder. So what are your, some of your rec recommendations for anybody who's even working uh, alongside you within the company you work for and are trying to get the attention of a Derek Ferguson? Yeah, I, I think one of the important things I always tell people is connect with people with a purpose uh don't don't assume that somebody's just waiting there to uh receive 20 emails from people that want to connect with them uh you know time is so precious and it's so hard to figure out you know what who and what you're going to respond to you know the way to really get someone to respond is connect to them you know with a purpose so if it's me and it's like i want to connect with sean prez and i know uh you know sean prez at uh, 7 30 every night he goes off to uh wherever you know the the um christian hip-hop venue or something like that i'm gonna try to connect with you on something like that like there's some there's some there's some reason why i'm contacting you you know it's like the random connections it's just really hard to sort through when you when you get them as to, as to like how do i respond to this person there's nothing like you know uh i think offering something offering somebody help with something or or like you know hey i see you're involved with this I see this is what you do after work. I see that you're involved with, uh, you know, Boys and Girls Club. Can I come with you uh, to, to volunteer? Like having a uh, connecting with a purpose is, is really important. I, I have a lot of people that will approach you and come up to you 
and you know they're really just kind of relying on your good nature to uh to kind of you know stay in touch with them and connect with them versus like you know give me a reason offer me something like what what is it you know what what is it that i'm going to get out of this or or not even that I want to get something out of it, but it's just going to allow you to cut through the clutter and say, oh, this person came and talked to me about this because they knew I was interested in this subject or this, that, or the other. And, uh, you know, there was there was something I was getting out of it more than just uh, another name or resume or, um, you know, just, a, just another connection. You know, Derek, you said something interesting, and, and uh, it took me back to the early days of us working together. Uh, and, and for anybody who is uh, listening to this on Clubhouse or or tuned in on our IG Live, listen up. One of, one of the ways that we bonded, especially within uh, the bad boy system back in those days, is we would have to work. And Derek, just don't let them fool you. Derek is... is a different kind of baller. Like this is a nice dude in real life, but this dude get on the court and was was vicious. Like like Derek was a whole different animal on that court. But you know, trying to reach people, and you can tell me, Derek, and I think you were kind of alluding to that. Trying to connect with people on interests outside of work, it seemed to work for us. Um, it seemed, you know, and it, we come from the music industry. So, of course, work, we had that in the office, but a big part of the lifestyle was also being at events, um, being at the clubs at night, playing ball, um, going down to Chelsea Piers, doing things like that. Would you recommend yourself, Derek, uh, that people try to... Get in touch with people outside of the office just as much as in the office. Yeah, I think I think you know you got to fall short of stalking, <laughs> but but I do think you know people connect based on you know uh, mutual interests. So if there's some 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 mutual interest or some some way you can help somebody, you know, and and, and I think a lot about just things. You know, things, if you could take something off of my plate or you can, and, and you, know, you can help in some way, I'm more likely to want to want to respond. But also, even as it relates to business and, you know, your own skill set, and it's funny, I have examples right here with Quasi, and, you know, there have been many people over the years that have reached out to me um, to uh, really, you know, to start a relationship and then ultimately you know, try to figure out if they could, you know, when I was at Bad Boy, work at Bad Boy, but Quasi was one of them, but he was very, it, w it was like, when Quasi uh, and I first met, he was very clear, like, you know, I'm, I'm learning and I am in fully steeped in the digital world. Like he was, Quasi was into digital, you know, when MySpace was first getting, getting built out. So, uh, he was building MySpace pages before anybody anybody even knew what MySpace was. And he was just like, look, you know, uh, here's who I am. We went to the same college. So, so I went to the University of Pennsylvania, and I'm all things digital. So if you have a digital question, call me up. I'm very interested in connecting. And he left me with something. I had a reason. Now, I may put the card aside, and I may never call them back. But I know if I got a digital question or I'm running into a roadblock on someone building a MySpace page, I have this person right here. I'll give you another example. Uh, Jason Wiley, who we all know, who uh, worked at Bad Boy, ended up being head of marketing at a certain point. Jason contacted me while he was still in college. Uh, again, we went to the same college, University of Pennsylvania. And he's just like, I love music and I just want to work at Bad Boy. And basically he was like, I'm willing to wait <laughs> until there's some opportunity that you can, you know, you could, that you think that um, I can add value on. I'll basically, he's like, I, I'll do anything. <laughs> and I remember uh, we were looking for, um, I believe we were looking for somebody to work with the group that was being built on MTV, that hip hop group, the band. And uh, I may have my timing off a little bit, but I remember uh, I think Candy Shan or somebody came to me and said, you know, look, we're looking for somebody. You, do you know anybody? And I was like, yeah, this guy. Jason. And what Jason did, and here's a good tip. 
Jason kind of made the connection. He's like, I'm that guy from Penn. I, I know you because you're an alumni. And he never really, he never really bugged me. <laughs> but like every quarter, be a quick little note or just some kind of quick connection and let, let you know he's still around. You know, Merry Christmas, whatever it is, just a little little note. And honestly, I think from the first time he reached out to me to about a year and a half later was when ultimately we were looking for somebody. And I was like, yeah, I got this guy's resume in my drawer. And I, I think I handed it to Candy. And I said, yeah, give him a call. I think, you know, he's looking for something and he's, you know, really interested. And uh, sure enough, we hired him. And then ultimately, maybe seven, eight, 10 years later, he became head of marketing for Bad Boy. Yeah, that's a that's a great story, um, Derek. I'm, I'm, I'm looking here on Instagram Live, my man Reg Hunt, um, who's also a frat brother of mine, he, he said that is the same approach that worked with him um, eventually coming to work with me um, over at Power Moves Inc. So it does, you know, just to tap into what you said, being a pest or being, you know, you can go overbearing. So you kind of got to space it out. But I would give one bit of of advice, and I know this works for me, and I guess, Derek, you can see if it would work for you. Um, and then I'm going to go over to Instagram Live because I want to bring in people from both sides and, and <clears throat> take it from there. But reaching out with a purpose you know, one thing that, that is a pet peeve of Sean's uh, is when somebody hits me blanket and just, I'll do anything. I, I don't even know what that means for Sean. Uh, I like when someone comes to me kind of the way Kwasi came to you, Derek, and he said, I do all things digital. If you have any digital questions, come see me. I'm your guy. And what I like or what I prefer, and everybody's different, um, go and do your research. Learn who it is you're reaching out to, see where they're deficient, and align your skill set with theirs so that when you are, if you are blessed enough to get through, and I think I'm relatively good, I, I always try to have this open door policy to at least hit people back. but. People lose me when it's just, uh, you know, I'll do anything or I'm looking to, to, for mental. To me, it's like, come and let me know what you do. Be, be, be very specific. That's what works. Or you can take the Jason Wiley approach and just randomly, you know, hit and reach out to people. But the, what I notice about that, Derek, is kind of out of sight, out of mind. And, and I know for me, Sometimes you have so much going on in your life, even with the best intentions. And even if you really like this person, they seem genuine, they seem like they could be a hard worker. When opportunities arise, you they might not be top of mind. Um, but, you know, different approaches, I guess, work for different people. But I, I, I think getting through to a show on press really coming in and, and, and seeing where I'm deficient at or where I can use help at and saying this is what I can bring to the table, that's what always makes my ears perk up and make me want to continue the conversation. Um, and Derek, did you catch that? Yes, yes, I did, Press. Yeah, that makes, uh, makes a lot of sense. It's just kind of like, you know, uh, length is sometimes not as important as what's that thing I'm going to remember. So, you know, trying to talk to somebody, get their ear for like five minutes, and they're not really saying much. It's like, what is the thing I need them to remember? And focusing on that, I think, is really my, uh, uh, my best advice. And sometimes, you know, those connections, whether it's we know somebody in common, you know, we have a uh, uh, fraternity, sorority in common. We went to the same school. Like all of those things are things that will just, uh, you know, just just be quick reminders and quick things someone can connect to you that will uh, help them to pick up that next call uh, the next time you call or respond to that email. Yeah, I, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, you know, on Instagram Live side, and then I'm going to come back on to the Clubhouse side. For anybody on Instagram Live, please hit the request button now. 
um, to jump on in, in also on the clubhouse side. I'm going to come right back on that side and allow people up into, and I don't even know all the lingo yet um, for the clubhouse side. What is it? The moderators the, the, into, yeah. into, the, into the panel? Let me, just, let me say something real quick. And quasi, you may know, I don't know the hand raising feature. I don't know if it's on. And is it, is, is it on? There's a couple people who are waiting to come on stage right now, Prez. Um, I also want to acknowledge Anthony Violante, who's here with us as well. Okay. Um, you know, the moves that he made to work at Bad Boy, he just, at, at a point where Bad Boy, you know, didn't have, like, fan websites, <laughs> he just created the hottest Bad Boy fan website in the game to the point where Huff and everybody, Keisha and everybody were like, who is this kid? And he just added so much value over time. They just had to, we just hired, we had to hire him. He was, so, you know, he became part of the team. <laughs> yeah. Just like literally out of nowhere. I, I, I think that that's so dope. I think that's so dope that you just said that. Did everybody catch that on the, on the IG live side? In, in, in terms of this guy, Anthony, just came and created, he saw, he saw where we were deficient. There was nobody who was monitoring um, and overseeing a fan website. And he just took it upon himself to do it and blew it up so much that he had to get a job. So, so it's really about bringing value. That's what it comes down to. You got to bring value. When, when, when somebody is making moves and they're already in position, you have to find a way to stand out. And that's why I always say, come to me with, with something that I need, so a place you can help. But to your point, Kwasi, you know, Anthony's approach was was brilliant. I'm going to start the bad boy fan site. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if I could, if I could just speak on that, like, my thing was I was a bad boy fan since day one, and I thought my in was going to be through the studio. And, yeah, I... But I, I happen to see there's no bad boy presence somewhere. And I said, let me let me just try to figure this out. And this was, I, I'd say, early 06. Um, kind of did everything, like, on the fan end. And by September, Puff had scooped me up. And I remember being in his kitchen, and he was like, how long did you go to school for this? And I was like, I never went to school for this. I just saw there was this hole missing, and I kind of jumped in it. So, yeah. That's brilliant, man. I, I think that that's dope. And that's the way you get on important people's radar. That is how you establish relationships, by bringing value. That That's really what it comes down to. I'm going to jump on over to this um, Instagram live side. Give me a second and see if we can, uh, you know, go between the two platforms. Yeah, while, you're getting, while you're getting that set up, I just had a quick Anthony story. I remember when we were talking about adding him to payroll, and I was talking to Harv, and Harv was like, no, but he does all the stuff for us now. Like, <laughs> we, we, can't, we can't lose him. I'm like, how's he, doing it for, how's he doing it for us now? He's not even on payroll. He's like, believe me, he does all of it right now. We have to put him on payroll. <laughs> Yeah, but see, see how amazing that is? You know, you, you, you come in and you just take initiative and then people will, will almost be compelled to give you a check because here you had somebody telling you, Derek, we got to hire this guy. We got to put him on payroll. Uh, you know, had you just come into the picture and said, I want a job, I don't, I don't know that it would have happened that way. Uh, but we're jumping over to the Instagram live side. Who we got here? Gene Alert. What's up, brother? Oh, what's going on, brother? What's going on? Yeah, Gene, it's good to see you. You're the happiest man I know. Always with a big <laughs> smile. We have to be, man. We blessed, man. We alive. We we here on a Wednesday talking business, talking entrepreneurship, talking about adding value. You know, that's really what it is, adding value. Um, and uh thank you, Derek, for sharing those stories because it's true, man. When when you think about if you want, it's sort of like the Kevin Lau story, right? You want to be able to add so much value that when, when it's time to like your internship is over, when your opportunity is over, people are like, yo, we got to keep this guy, you know? So we have to give him a check. And that was the same thing that happened to me. I mean, it wasn't in the entertainment business, but it was in um, I, my first little internship in high school. 
uh, I was uh, I was working at this company called Shank Treble, and it was a uh, it was a three week internship, Sean. And all of a sudden, at the end of the internship, because I added so much value, doing so much extra work, right? They end up giving me a job, eighteen dollars an hour. <laughs> oh, that's dope, you know man! I mean? And this is in, this is in '96, so I know adults right now wishing they get eighteen dollars in 2021. You know what I mean? Yeah, Gene. Just, just so, just so our audience knows who you are. Can you give them a little bit on your backstory, real brief, and yeah, then we'll yeah. go into this whole conversation? Okay. All right. Uh, twenty. Yeah, twenty-one years in the um, in business, being an entrepreneur. I started off in real estate. Um, still in real estate. I work with Compass right now. Uh, I started a, a management entertainment company called ACA Branding Agency. Um, we've been running that for 15 years, a published author, three times, uh, two time bestseller book, uh, do right, do good, single man, married man. I, um, I'm a father, I'm a husband, uh, 12 years. My son is five. Uh, you know, I just, um, yeah, man, I'm a businessman, man. I just love business. I love, I love entertainment as far as, uh, just adding value to people's lives. And, uh, you know, that's what I do, man. I'm a faith, grind, inspire. The three words that cover it all. Okay, so Gene, <laughs> yeah. you, you got a lot going on. You, yeah. you, you, you clearly are an entrepreneur at heart. You have uh, uh, several businesses going on simultaneously. Yeah. You're a husband. You are a father. You have your hand in real estate. You have yeah. your hand, you know, in, 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 in several different um it's different industries altogether. Yeah, frozen. How do you keep that. yourself? How do you keep yourself so organized? A planner. <laughs> <laughs> so real, you know. I, Hold I, on, I, what, what, I, I want you to say that louder because we got people listening in on on Clubhouse. What'd you say? I said a planner. <laughs> a planner, man. You got to have a planner. You have to write things down. I don't care who you are. I don't care how much how cool you think you are. All the big executives, all the people that are really making moves, like my man Sean, Derek, all these guys have a planner. They write things down. And uh, I've been writing things down since the beginning. You know, you can't, you, you, everything starts with a plan, right? But where are you going to keep it? You can't, your phone is a distraction. You're, you, you know, you got emails, you got text, you got Instagram, you got TikTok, you got all these things, right? There's a book. And uh, I, I'm so mad I don't remember it. Uh, but it's basically the, the premise of it was every tool that you have has its own uh, purpose, right? Your cell phone has its purpose. Your, your MacBook has its purpose. Your laptop has its purpose. Your uh, iPad has its purpose. Your phone has its purpose. Like, so your planner is for your productivity. And so, Sean, I mean, I'm so excited. The reason I'm talking about a planner is because normally – they have planners out there that the original planners were all made for workers, right? There wasn't really a planner made for entrepreneurs. And I, uh, last year during the pandemic, I decided I was like, I'm going to put together my own planner that's going to help creatives. I want to help entrepreneurs, stay home moms, dads, uh, and just people in general without a date and a time because we can't manage time. Uh, Derek said something interesting in the beginning. He said, our time is precious and we, we struggle to manage it, right? We struggle with it. So with your planner, you shouldn't have to struggle with it. You know what I mean? You should, your planner should be comfortable. Your planner should be something where you can use every time you want to use it. You shouldn't feel anxiety when you miss a day. Because some days, bro, you know we busy. You know we busy. So some days we miss a day. You know, we, we trying to juggle a lot of things. And we, sometimes we just don't write it. So now when we look back and we see a page that's blank, now in our mind, we like, yo, we didn't do nothing, mm -hmm. you know? And so I'm eliminating that with this book, bro. And so it's called the Faith Grind Inspired po um, Podcast. Faith Grind Inspired Planner. And uh, it's, it starts off, you start off your day with um, gratitude. What are you grateful for today? I don't need an inspirational quote to start my day. You know what I'm saying? We all have a purpose. We all have a reason why we move every day, everybody, right? So I don't need someone from outside to tell me a quote that's going to make me move for today. 
right? We have to be moving by ourselves. Motivation is temporary. Inspiration is forever, right? And so, but we want to be grateful. And if we have gratitude, God is going to always bless us and the universe is going to bless us. I don't care what religion you are. Like the universe is going to bless us with something, but we have to start with us, right? So it starts off with uh, gratitude and then you start your, your, you start your time because everybody starts their day different. Like I'm a, I'm a suit, right? So I wake up at five. I'm in the, I'm in the office by like 7.38, right? But there's people that in the entertainment business, they start their day in the, in the, uh, at 11 o'clock at night studio time. You feel me? So, yep. so, so they sleeping during the day. So the planners that are traditional, they're like, they, those planners are start from seven. Gene, I think I think your um uh internet for whatever reason it looks like it um is freezing up on your side. For all my movers out there, especially on the IG side, can y'all tell me if if it is freezing up? Let me see. Okay, we're having a little technical difficulties here. We're going to try to get yeah. Gene back in. I just going to chime in. It's real interesting. What he was saying about planning, uh, we all know, Sean, we know Dia, Dia Sims, who uh incredible executive we were fortunate to work with. She made a great comment, which is, why are all meetings either 30 minutes or an hour? She's like, I'm very much into the seven-minute meeting. If it's going to take seven minutes, let's schedule seven minutes for it. Why, why are we going to schedule 30 minutes? And that's really, I mean, that shows how, like, every minute has got to be managed and productive. Uh, and, you know, there's nothing more time-robbing than a meeting going 30 minutes, 60 minutes that could have been done in 10. Five, five minutes, exactly. Exactly. I, I know, like the that's Instagram such a great point. That's such a great point, Derek. But go ahead, go ahead, Gene. No, no, no. That's an excellent point. You know, especially if the planners that you see in the market today, they, you know, it's like this little box from, you know, eight to nine, 10 to 11, you know, because they want, those are meant for workers. It's like one meeting for one hour and that's it. All you could do is one thing for an hour. And it, it, we're entrepreneurs, you know, we could do multiple things in one hour. We got to move, you know what I'm saying? And so, um, and that's why I created it, you know, and it took a while. Um, to actually design it, create it, and um, get the manufacturer because the, the planners in this type of, with this type of book, um, they're $45, $70, you know, $45, $37. Um, and they're super confusing, man. Like when you, you know, they want you to put all these things, it's, you, need, you need a degree to learn how to use the damn planner. You know what I'm saying? And um, I, that, I'm eliminating all of that, bro. I had one guy, and, and, and I know you want to talk about some other stuff, but I had one guy I called, and he was like, yeah, man, I bought this 90-day planner, and it's going to help me be motivated and help me get productive, right? So I said, when did you buy it? He said, January 2020. And I said, yo, but it's February 2021. You didn't use it yet? And he was like, nah, man, because it's a 90-day planner, and I got to get my mind right so I can use it for 90 days straight. I said, yo, bro, are you serious? You, you had the whole pandemic. Everybody was home. If you can't get your mind right for 90 days, throw that shit out, man. <laughs> That's you true. I mean? So I was like, but you don't even need to worry about that because you won't need to, you could start from, as soon as you open this book, as soon as you open this book, you'll be able to work and get it together. You know what I'm saying? So I'm excited about it, man. Well, here, here, I want to try something a little different, and I love yeah. what you're talking. Hey, Kwasi, are you there? Like, can, can we get a couple more people into the um, so that they can speak? Go ahead. I'm trying to pull Red Hunt up right now. It's like he's trying to come on stage. Yeah, if, if you're trying to get on stage on the clubhouse side, go ahead and wave your hand. Let us know, and we can kind of cross. Um. 
conversate between both because the audio the audio is, is is seeming like it's working just great so back to you gene and i think that this is an ingenious ingenious idea uh while we while we we're, we're working on getting people up on stage on the um actually reggie hunt just got on stage on the instagram side reg do you have any questions for gene alert No, I don't. Um, he's, he's very precise and informative on everything that he's saying. I definitely appreciate the gentleman, Gene. Same to you, Derek. Thank you, brother. Um, Gene. Yeah. Can you walk us through? Because one of one of the the challenges that I see, you just touched on something that was uh, that just needed to be said, right? This pandemic. I said from 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 last March, there's no way on planet Earth I would consider myself a failure. I would I would I would hate myself if I look in the mirror and I'm in the same place when this pandemic ends as when it started. And you were just talking about somebody who had to get their mind right during the plan pandemic to start a 90 day plan. <laughs> What you know, and, and and I want you to help some some somebody now who's thinking about moving forward with a business and getting it off the ground. What are the first steps that people should take? What are the first steps that you even took? Yeah. Because it seems like you were able to uh, really understand why you know planners are not new. No, but you you were able to say you know what they're not effective. No, nope. either not as they stand. No, nope. and I feel like I can bring something new. I can, I, I can remix the traditional planner yeah. and make it effective. Yeah, because planners, planners were traditionally made for workers. The school system was to create workers, right? So everything was generated for you to be a worker, right, and not a boss. You weren't, you weren't, you didn't go to school to become a boss, right? You became, they didn't breed entrepreneurs. Actually, when I started be, uh, in, uh, becoming an entrepreneur, at what year was that, 2000? Um, I remember people thought I was unemployed, right? They were like, oh, you unemployed? I was like, no, nah, I'm a business owner. They're like, <laughs> no, you just don't got a job, bro. Like, you know? And so it was like the Tommy, you know what I mean? Tommy, you know what I'm saying? So, but um, the thing about it is, right, for people who want to start something out there, a lot of people want to create something new, right? They want to be the next Steve Jobs. They want to be the next whatever, NFT, whatever, they, Bitcoin. They want to create a new coin, whatever. I get it. But the thing is, your purpose, when you follow your purpose, do not chase money. That is the biggest mistake I've realized with a lot of people. And if you really listen to what Derek said, what you said about these other guys um, that get opportunities, they didn't say anything about money. They didn't say anything about money. They said, look, I love music. This is what I want to do. Use me. I am everything digital. Use me. Think of me when you think of digital, right? When I, when I used to, it's funny because when I went up to um, uh, Sean John, right, when I wanted to get printing, you know, do some printing for you guys for Combs Enterprises, I went up there and I told those guys, I said, look, think of me when it comes to a black owned printer. You guys all print business cards. You know, those Sean John business cards, the clear ones. Yeah, that was my company that printed those, bro. That's like, dope. Yeah. Back in uh, 20, what, 2016, 2017. That was me. You know, when you guys moved from one office to the next one, I printed the, the Sean John cars, the Combs Enterprise cars, and I shipped them to California. I, the only cars I, I, I printed, the little thin uh, blue, blue, what is it, blue flame cards, I did those. But you know what it was? I kept going, bro. I was persistent, and I was like, look, I know you guys print. I want to add value. I want, I, I'm going to print the same fly ass cards that you guys print. I'm a Scorpio just like Diddy. So I, I know what type of sexy he wants and I want to do it. And I just, I, was, I wasn't annoying, but I was very persistent, bro. You know, 
And even when it came down to delivery and uh, for all the entrepreneurs listening, you know, all about delivery, man, because you're a boss, because you want to be a CEO, I don't even have on my business card. It doesn't even say CEO. It doesn't say founder. My, my, and I own the company. I put consultant, right? Because number one, and guess what? I treat every business, every job, every opportunity, like I was an intern, you know what I'm saying? And I have a doctorate, you know? And I, and I literally, after I got the opportunity with Sean John and um, th those guys to like, you guys to print those cards, you know what I did, Sean? I hand delivered it. I have interns. I got staff that could deliver it. I could have UPS it, but I hand delivered it because I knew I wanted them to see my face. So, so shout out to the whole team over there because they were shocked. They were like, yo, what are you doing here? So I wanted to personally hand deliver it to every single person, Jeff Tweedy, all those guys, man. You know what I mean? And, 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 and that's what makes you stand out. So you, it doesn't have to be emails. It doesn't have to be like, yo, I want to make you rich. I want to do this. No, it's just adding value, being the, being authentic to who you are, staying consistent. You got to stay consistent. You know what I'm saying? A lot of these people, they don't want to be consistent. They want to get rich now. They don't want, they, they want the opportunity or they say they want the opportunity, but really they just want the bag. You know what I mean? They call it pan, uh, pandemic. You know what I mean? Like, no, bro. Like, I wasn't thinking about pandemic, bro. I was thinking about long term. I've always been in a marathon. Like, I've, I've been doing this 21 years this year in November. And I'm, I'm fine. You see what I'm saying? I'm fine. And we had a conversation yesterday, right, Sean? And, or two days ago. And you asked me something like, why didn't you pivot and do a digital uh, virtual school program? I said, I don't want to. <laughs> you know what I mean? Cause it's not about chasing a bag for me. It's for, for me, it's adding value. And I can't add the, the, the um, amount of value that I want, right? On a computer, right? I want to physically be there because I know the emotional uh, support that some of these students need. And I know the disconnect they have on the computer. So I want to be there in their face talking to them if they really need me side by, you know what I'm saying? And they used to pull me on the side like, yo, man, I didn't eat today, bro. And I'm like, yo, look, here, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, whatever the conversations are, you know, but I just don't feel like I could have added that much value. And maybe I'm wrong, but this is how I feel and this is how I operate, you know? And this is what helped me throughout the years stay true to myself. You see what I'm saying? I, I, I have one thing, Sean, that, that is... Uh, I have self-awareness of Gene. It doesn't have to make sense to you. It doesn't have to make sense to anybody on Clubhouse. It doesn't have to make sense to Derek. Nobody. It just has to make sense to Gene. And because Gene has to be the one doing it. When Gene's bills come every month, Gene pays it, right? With, so it has to be good for Gene. The reason you, you started with me in the beginning, you said, Gene, you always smile. you like the happiest person. You know why, bro? Because I have self-awareness and I'm true to myself. I don't do anything for the likes. I don't do anything for comments. I don't do anything for nobody else except Gene and this kid right here. Look, Anu, say what's up. Yeah, all right. yeah. <laughs> he's sneaking, he's sneaking by, man. But you know, and so I do it for my family, bro. Like, and that's it, you know. So, but you gotta be true. You can't, my grandfather said this to me when we were when I was younger. He said, never, never chase money, always build business, right? Build a business that's for you, right? Don't, don't just do anything going to trends because everybody else is going into it, right? If you, if you want to learn, if you want to learn is really a passion, you do it. But if it's, if it's, you're just trying to chase money, I know a lot of people that got into real estate. I started mortgages, right, Sean, uh, when I was 18 years old. Oh, in, 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 in a second, and I'm sorry because I I, I want to get yeah. to people on Clubhouse. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, go ahead, bro. I, I want yeah, I want to get to some people, and I'm I'm sorry to interject there. Yeah. Okay, so so Reg, I know we brought you up to um up to the stage. Was this something? Was this something on your mind? Because I know you waved your hand to come on the stage. No, nah, nothing in particular. Um, I just, uh, I actually had waved my hand with D for, um, 
was was talking before Gene had actually got on, and then I got completely enthralled by what Gene was talking about. So again, thank you both for the jewels. Got you. Is there anybody on the clubhouse side that wants to join in this conversation? I mean, we 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 started the conversation in a place that um I, I think is necessary. Um, you know, speaking about relationships, I see Shelly just came to the stage. Shelly, the mic is yours. Hi there. Um, I know Quasi pretty well. Um, nice to be here. Um, I love what you guys are saying about following your um, your passion and not the bag, honestly, because one of the things that I've come across in my career is that when I become, when I join a company and I actually become a quote-unquote partner, and it, it sucks, but I don't know why this happens, but all of a sudden, familiar, familiar, familiarity breeds contempt. You know what I mean? I, I feel like they, it is usually, I'd say nine times out of nine, out of ten, um, people ask me to be part of their companies. And I say, okay, let's try it. And then once I'm in, it's like, it's all of a sudden like I'm less than, and it's just so weird. So I always have to approach it now, and I've learned the hard way, that I can come in as a minority partner, I can get this piece I can do that, but I can't ever be under anybody. I always have to be my own entity. Otherwise, people take advantage. You know, Shelly, it might be good if you share. I mean, you've worked on so many projects over the years. Maybe a couple of the highlights of your career. Sure. Um, wow, well, so hard to talk about myself. Um, I've been working in the entertainment industry for uh, 22 years. I've produced very large scale concerts around the world, every off the of Jamaica, Germany, LA. Um, I partners with Stephen Mar Marley. I co-produced the Kaya Fest Festival. Um, thanks to COVID, we haven't had it in two years. Uh, I do consulting. Um, I really, I'm a brand builder. I love people and I, I go in and I can kind of have the uh, bird's eye perspective on brands and people. And I'm a, a master connector. I just, I have, like my database is in my head, and I, when I meet people, I'm like, oh, that person should know that person, that person. But I'm just a natural connector. So I love getting people together. My joy, honestly, my biggest joy is putting people together and getting people paid and getting people jobs. That's my biggest joy. Um, so I, I think I've been able to do that, but I've just known that I have, unfortunately, I just have a lot more power just kind of being my own entity and coming in and helping and never really going under anybody's wing or being anybody's 50 50 partner. Just. I guess I just want to be polyamorous when it comes to business. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with that at all. Right, um, right. I, I, I think one of the things that I always tell people, uh, not just in business, but in life, whether you are, are you know, a family person, you are uh, someone who is an employee or you're someone who is aspiring to start a business. It's great to know who you are but it's so much better to know who you're not. And it sounds, Shelly, like you have right. a keen sense on not only who you are, but who you're not and what works for you and, and what doesn't. So I think that that's valuable information that you just gave the group. Thanks, it's taken a lot of mistakes to figure it out. <laughs> yeah, mo most times it does. We, you know, I think it's human nature to, to uh, wanna please people I think it's human nature of all of us to to sometimes just want to do the right thing for the sake of of wanting to do the right thing, but it doesn't always align with who you are, um, you know. So you have found that look, I don't necessarily need to be a partner. Let me come do what I do, be a great connector, and that's what you know kind of feeds my spirit. And it goes to what Gene was saying. You know, when when he was speaking, is you know he stays very very true to exactly who he is, and that's why he's able to to have that big smile on his face all the time. Thank you. Okay, I see somebody else on um Clubhouse waving their hand. Let me see if I can get them in to this conversation. Hello, good evening, hi Price, hi everyone. Thank you for bringing me up. Um. I, I just joined the convo, so I, I hope I'm not being repetitive. Um, but I, I think when it comes to partners and, and and joining, you know, certain teams, I feel like everyone kind of has their own visions, and it's it's up to to you to remember to be true to your own vision and not letting, I guess. Not, not, 
not not being a good partner and like not compromising, but at the same time, remember your focus and not diving away of what works for you and amplifying those things. I think it's, we all have our own visions and it's very hard for people to, you know, be open to others and, and just keeping that, that same, I guess, focus and, and realizing that it's not the same. And though you might have another idea of overall uh, focus of what you want this partnership or relationship to be, it's hard to, you know, stay aligned in doing that in the same way. I remember everyone wouldn't do things as you would and so on and so on. Thank you, Chanel. Um, Chanel, for people who are not familiar with you, why don't you introduce yourself to the group? Oh, that that would be nice, right? Um, I'm Chanel. I am a independent publicist. I have been doing this since, what, 08? Um, I worked with Sean early in my career for a short stint. Um, I'll save you guys the story. Um, but I, I've always looked up to Sean. And you've been a mentor in my head. And I'm just happy to know you and, and to continue to learn from you. Well, I think that everybody, you're doing, you know, amazing things out there, Chanel. And, you know, establishing yourself as a publicist, um, in the industry is not easy. Uh, and the fact that you have been doing this for so many years, it speaks volumes to yourself and to, to the work and, you know, the value that you're able to bring your clients. So I think it's, it's, it's great. And, um, you know, I was just happy to see you um, wave your hand and want to come up on the stage because I, I, I know you can um, drop a lot of gems and, and really enlighten our audience. So thank you. No, thank you. I, I sorry, I haven't been on Clubhouse in a while. I feel like it's gotten very oversaturated, but I'm not I'm trying not to shy away from it because just like in the early days of Twitter, it's very um it has the power to to let us have access to things early and to people early, right? The early people that were on here, I think I, I have built some poor relationships and that's what I would advise, but I think it's so one so easy to be addictive, like to get addicted to this, but at the same time not implement some of the conversations. And a lot of the conversations have been repetitive on here. So I try not to come in like every day. I've, I've now weaned myself off of it to like, no, let me pop in like when I have quote unquote downtime and see what would be meaningful or connect with people that I haven't spoken to in a while. And that's kind of like how I treat like networking events overall. That's how I'm treating Clubhouse. Like, oh, I haven't spoken to this person in a while. Let me say hello. Or, no, this conversation looks meaningful. I can actually learn from this event opposed to being on here every damn day and hearing people say the same shit over and over and over. <laughs> no, we totally understand. We totally understand. Um, Gene, I know you're still waiting on the the um, IG side. For for everybody on Instagram side, because I really like to try to keep our conversation to one hour. This is Warrior Wednesdays. Um, if you guys don't mind, because I'm going to shut it down on the Instagram side, and we'll keep the conversation going on the Clubhouse side. If you guys don't mind, come and join us over on Clubhouse. Sean Prez at Power Move Makers. Sean Prez at Power Move Makers. Um, we're going to continue this conversation for a little while longer because I see a couple of people waving their hand wanting to get up on stage. Gene, are, are, are you on um, Clubhouse? Yeah, yeah ping, ping me. Okay, I, I don't even know how to ping oh. anybody. So, right. yeah, my, my, so, can, can someone ping me, ping me in the room? Yeah, can, it's can Mr. Mr. Ping? yeah, it's Mr. Alert, M-R-A-L-E-R-T-E. And and I know I know I'm under here as Sean Prez at Power Move Makers, so I don't know if that's yeah, easy Prez, for y'all to find. The, the way to do it, if you put the link of this room in the Instagram chat, anybody can just click on it and come directly to this room. Okay, so hold tight, y'all. I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna put the link of the Instagram chat in. So hold tight on, and everybody in Clubhouse, um, Derek or Kwame, why don't y'all continue the conversation in Clubhouse? I'm gonna put the link, um on the IG live side.
there's a lot of stuff in development right now. I'm actually moving to St. Lucia and working with the Prime Minister's office over there. I'm, going to I'm sorry, what country? St. Lucia. St. Lucia, Caribbean. Sick. Yeah, we're working with the Prime Minister over there to open up the orange economy, which is uh, we've got to create different ways for people to make money over there other than tourism. So uh, we're looking to bring entertainment properties over there, do movies over there, uh, anything we can. Also develop artists over there with Commissioner Gordon, who I think you know, Quasi. Um, he's my partner, Gordon, Commissioner Williams. Uh, I think you, you guys all know him. He produced Miss Education, Lauren Hill, uh, Men in Black, Album. 